With the coming of the Assembly in May this year, there'll be new lines drawn on the battleground of politics and power in Wales. HTV presents In the Company of Strangers, a three-part thriller that looks forward to the brave new world of Wales in the year 2001. A new beginning, a nation spreading its wings. That was how the SNP today announced their bid for full independence for Scotland. The people of Scotland will now vote in a referendum to decide whether to leave the United Kingdom. Can Labour in Westminster stop this type of change? And if Scotland votes yes, will Wales want independence too? Let's hear first from Fergus Campbell, yes. Secretary of State for Northern Ireland, Scotland. To one and me. <laughs> well, I think the change is always stimulating. They've run out of hot wire. No problem. Definitely no problem. Get him. Drag Ellie away from that. I know that um Martin will be. It's mine. Tina Martin, as First Secretary for the Assembly of Wales, don't you want to follow in Scotland's footsteps? <laughs> you know. Wales has come a long way in the two years since the Assembly began. We've established a new sense of our own worth, a new sense of independence. But Wales isn't Scotland. We have a different history and, of course, different aspirations. So, what was that? For old time sake. <laughs> I wish I had your imagination, Leo. <laughs> But let's talk about Scotland and their future. That surely is the... I was watching her. I've just been sick. Good. Made room for more. Why do you always have to be so practical? Hey! Now, for my starstruck little sis, bitch for my friend from the swamp because one day she's going to swim the world for Ellie because she's always so serious <laughs> and for me Goldilocks because she always ends up in someone else's bed <laughs> <laughs> because I'm beautiful <laughs> I've got to go and do something. What sort of something? I'll tell you later. Well, Helen, the gig's already started. Just give me an hour. I know that I could never fall from grace. I'm far too clever.
save my life. Are you gonna jump? <laughs> Whatever happened. Would you be there for me? I'd be there. And me. Me too. off. Ellie, it's Kim. I know I've not been in touch. Things have been, what do you know, <clears throat> off to heaven. I've got a job now. I already talked to Maraid. She's going to skip her training tonight. So can we all meet? The press release? On its way. Prick. Problem? Phone call. Personal. He'll pick them up on the way in. Oh, the roof is tied down. Ten minutes. No idea what we do with the other nine, mind you. Cow. She sound? Well, at least she called. There's a big speech going down here. It's gonna go on for a bit. Maybe quite a bit. Come down here later, both of you, yeah? We'll be there. Get you. Listen, I'm off, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Bye. Bye. 
Ministerial speeches are always circulated well in advance. It's standard procedure, especially speeches like this. You're supposed to be our bloody eyes and ears. I don't like this any more than you do, Fergus. I don't like her any more than you do. But I am not. I am not. You bloody Tudor puppet! Toyota 1992. LG 1996. And now the Stark Operation of Montreal. We've been holding talks with the corporation. A new factory in Mid Wales. Yesterday they called my office. A change of plan. They're now citing the new factory and recruiting the 2,000 workers they need in South Yorkshire. <laughs> Bad news for us, good news for South Yorkshire. Oh, and for the Secretary of State for Trade and Industry, constituency, South Yorkshire. Well, what are you going to do? You look like you've seen a ghost. Kim, you look like Helen, yeah? I always did. Why do you think I used to wear my hair so long? Not much point now, though, is there? Her things. All her stuff. I need your help. A month ago, Star Corporation received a surveyor's report. Possible problems with a site in Mid Wales. Made them twitchy. This was to Had anything else been held back? No government the report was completely bogus, of course. And guess who sent it? This smacks of the same old story to me. The same old strings, the same old weapons. You mean she deliberately sabotaged 2,000 Welsh jobs? Just to stir up anti Westminster feeling? She's out of control, Fergus. The bitch is on heat. She's good, isn't she? She's brilliant. Never you. Starting off as her researcher. And now you're mine. dramatic speech earlier today, Tina Martin received strong support from all political parties in the Assembly for her stand. Again, it seems Wales has lost out to England when it comes to inward investment. How does this news make you feel? We're not sure. Political parties in the Assembly for her stand. Education Committee, Connor. Hearing on the finance plans has been rescheduled for two o'clock on Tuesday. Tina's doing the soundbite for World at One. Yes, well, uh, it's a good job. You're not in demand with the telly boys. Uh, well, thanks. Her CDs, books, all her personal things. They're all just sitting there. Can we sort it? Three of us. Tonight? Dad? Hello. Hello, Ellie. So what happened to your one-man campaign to save the British beef industry? Your father's watching what he eats these days, Ellie. He must make it easier to get it in his mouth. <laughs> so how's the talking shop? We're doing a lot more than just talking. Don't tell me the middle of the road has finally found some boards. Well, at least we're trying to move things on. <laughs> they dilute things, Ellie. They give you an illusion of independence so that you don't strive for the real thing. No. We're taking real steps along a real road. If you believe that, you believe anything. <laughs> Assembler's powers are severely limited. That's what New Labour want. Only some do. Most do. They want us to think like little Brits, fearing the Assembly is on the slippery slope towards Welsh independence. 
you like to join us, Ellie? Sorry, no thanks. I never could take conversations of single syllables. Are you gonna let her talk to me like that? Show some respect to your new mother, Ellen. Ellie? We're forging new alliances, Dad. In inclusive politics, haven't you heard? Yes, I'd heard. Usually ends up in a muddle and strife. <laughs> you were happy with old alliances at one time. You were happy with Mum at one time? Will we be seeing her this weekend? You might. Go on, say it. Bitch. If we find any sex aids, I bag them, yeah? You need them. <laughs> Shithead. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Why go off like that? She often went off in her room. Yeah, but why didn't she say where she was going? Well, she hardly told us anything about anything those last few months. There's more to it than just an accident there has to be. The coroner. Stuff. The coroner. She fell, Kim. That was the verdict. Accidental death. We don't know that for sure. What if she bumped into some weirdo? There's no evidence that anyone was with her at all. Alcohol level abnormally high. You've got to accept it, Kim. She was pissed. Like we all were that night, and she fell. It was just one of those things. She's not moving on. Look at her. Look at what she's doing to herself. She's a mess. Trip fixed up. Dublin. Next week. We'll need someone local. Usual fee, normal arrangements. You'll get the pictures by email. Send them on. Connor. That stupid Goldilocks isn't here. I've still got my beer. So bye. And me. the cars here and check on departures. Yeah, sure. The uh, press conference is fixed for nine tomorrow morning. That's the release the Rat Pack will be getting an hour before. Two hundred jobs. Plenty enough to justify a front bench visit to the fair city. And the real reason I'm going to Dublin? Tim will meet you at the hotel. You should be here any minute. Thank what? you. That's ridiculous. Don't tell me. You've been bollocked for coming in late. I've been sacked. Too much makeup. Or maybe it wasn't enough. I wasn't really taking it in. They can't do that. Yeah, well, either way, the message was clear enough. My face don't fit. He, uh, should be with you by ten. And why is he there? Officially. Ongoing talks with regard to a policy of continuing inward investment. 
He's just another businessman, Richard. Relax. I'm probably better out of it anyway. It's the first job you've had since college. <laughs> Poxy waitress. I'll talk to someone. Nothing's gonna go right for me, is it? Ever. Hey. I told you, didn't I? I'd be there for you. I was talking about saving my life. And I'm talking about getting you one. Relax. No one will be remotely interested. <clears throat> Query from the audit committee. Are our uh, not-so-young friends subscription to the um, Melody Maker and New Musical Express really legitimate expenses? Richard likes to keep up with the times. <laughs> Which explains those incomprehensible lyrics he's always quoting in his speeches. Image, Annie. And why he likes to surround himself with bright young things, I suppose. <laughs> You'll turn into a mermaid. No training tonight. Well, if it's overtime you're looking for, forget it. Two grand a year they start paying for the privilege of not swimming with the pros. And they're still cutting our budget. I'm Karen, the herbalist. She's working this evening, yeah? Problem? No. And don't be so nosy. I'm interested. It's just different. And I'm gay. Since when? Since I started working for you. <sighs> this stuff you knock out. Witches' potions. Well, it's just a friend of mine's been given something. So what's it supposed to do? Is she a good friend of yours? Well, yeah. Not that good if she hasn't told you why she's taking these. Your friend's pregnant. If we didn't want to eat in, could you recommend a good restaurant? For sure, but you just missed Mr. Williams. So what's this? Nightcap. Good evening. Oh, forget about work for now. So tonight was work, then? We're a touch hostile, aren't we? I'm a touch pissed off, yes. I'm your researcher, Richard. I spend every day putting together little pieces of a jigsaw, only there is one problem. No one actually tells me what the picture is, and, and every time I try and ask you, you are not shagging me tonight. So decide right now whether we're going to talk or you're going to leave. Tonight? Out. <sighs> Next year's budget. Word is there's a cut. Economic necessity, that's the official line. And the unofficial? Slap on the wrists. In case the Tafts are getting just that little bit too uppity. 
It's the one card they can always play, isn't it? You dance all you like. Just be very sure it's our tune. You sound like my father. It's all a sham. Oh, he's right. So we're wasting our time. No, but that's what tonight was all about. And a good few other nights just like it. His name is Tim Hallam. MD of an outfit called Tech 3000, interest in the Far East Asia of the US. Tina's been talking to him for the last six months. He's looking for a European base. He wants to open a factory? Elliot, he wants to recite the whole shebang. He's been looking for the right country for the last two years. Now, we're looking at an injection in some poor country's economy of well over eight billion. And with that kind of money? You break the umbilical. By jumping into bed with a multinational? Well, there's nothing wrong with two parties jumping into bed together. So long as they're consenting adults. You could go to Europe. What a fight your way through all that bureaucracy. Get a slap on the ankle from Auntie. on our own two feet. And what if we'd fall flat on our face? Well, that's all part of being grown up, isn't it? What failing? No, having the right to. So what happens next? There's an announcement in a few weeks' time. The first of Tim's businesses relocating. Just a few mil at the start. A nice little learner, nothing to raise too many eyebrows. The following week, another announcement. But by the time the dinosaurs the other side of the dike wake up to what's happening, we shall be in long trousers. Wales Incorporated. No, but well on the way to what we all want. To what your father used to preach. He married again, didn't he? He met the usual sort of midlife crisis. I take it you're not too keen on his new wife. At his age. I find the two of them just a bit ridiculous. So... Do you have a problem with older men and younger women? You're hardly my father. Exactly. Good night, Richard. Time for a quick coffee. Pregnancy is the only thing they're prescribed for in their heavens. I don't know anything about it. You've always run from trouble. Well, we'd have had to have slept to get a first, wouldn't we? I mean, that is the way these things normally work, isn't it? Don't be fooled by appearances, sis. She was an old-fashioned girl at heart. At least with me. So did she say anything when it finished? Called up for the weekend, it was like the shutters had come down. There was someone else, though, I do know that. I lost it big time when she told me I kept on and on at her. Why? That's when she let something slip. So who was he? I don't know. But it was serious. Serious enough to maybe even have his child. All I know is I'd never seen her so happy. Or so scared. It's a potent combination, Maureen. Something I never managed. So why didn't it come out in the inquest? Maybe they missed it. I mean, she couldn't have been that far gone. So they did a post-mortem and they missed she was pregnant? Look, all you found is a bottle of pills. That doesn't mean a thing. Yeah, but it's something else that doesn't add up. Like, why'd she finish with Aiden? Mm -hmm. Maybe she just got fed up with him. Like, who is this mystery boyfriend? Maybe she just invented him to make it easier to finish with Aid. 
Why don't you see that there's something wrong here? Because you're doing exactly what Kim's doing. You're constructing conspiracy theories, searching for sense in something that hasn't got any. Look, I told you before, none of us are going to move on, not until we leave all this behind us. It's not Kim at all, is it? What? You're the one who really can't deal with all this. I'm the only one who's trying to. When was the last time you went home? What's that got to do with anything? When your parents got divorced, it was like you just threw a switch, you know? That was then, this is now. Don't look back. But there's nothing wrong with putting things behind you. Yeah, well, people usually face them first. Look, I don't get this. Why are we talking about me all of a sudden? That's what Kim is trying to do. Deal with it, work it through. Maybe we should do something about this. There's enough rumors flying around about the pair of us. I thought you always said it would confuse things. Us living together, working together. Maybe after all this stuff with Tim's out of the way. That's fine by me. Part is a punter called Tim Hallam. Cross referenced his and Tina's movements over the last six months. His name crops up eight times. She meets a lot of businessmen. Part of the secret scheme. Connor, I couldn't give a tinker's toss about her plans to turn that pissy little country of yours into a banana republic. As far as I'm concerned, good luck to her. She'll find out soon enough if she starts touching up a multinational, she better make ultra sure they're wearing a very well lubricated condom. We've um we've had a hacker monitoring a few bank accounts for the last six months. Yeah, including yours, Connor. Thresher should give you a Queen's Award for industry. Tina's account made more interesting reading. Earlier this year, she paid in a hundred grand, so we started sniffing. Four more deposits followed. The morning after the Dublin Farago, she put in quarter of a mil. I ran the deposits against the dates you supplied. Perfect match. This is payback, Connor. Big time. What the hell are you smiling at? She's finally done it, hasn't she? She's finally fallen flat on that hard ass of hers. We are months away from a general election. We put the woman there. The Scots have already shafted us with all this Greta Garbo crap they're pulling. Now we've got your lot on the biggest gravy train since the last days of Major Major. This is not going to reflect very well on our beloved leader. So what do we do now? Tina has to be persuaded to go, quietly. No fuss and no hacks, Connor. We don't want anyone sniffing around this one. And uh, that's my mission, should I choose to accept it. Yeah. Merry Christmas. And Dolly Clowen. And judging by the bonfires, the fireworks, and the street parties and the rallies, they couldn't be happier. Let's go now to Glasgow to see how the... Never had Connor down for a supporter of our Celtic cousins. Always thought he was one of the old guard. Don't rock the boat, know thy place. That generation. I thought you and he were at university together.
Managed to resist Connor's piss up too, have you, Annie? Very sensible. Oh, Tina. All that, um, problem's been solved, by the way. Your friend, the waitress, I had a word. That silver tongue of yours? No, it doesn't always work. It didn't in Dublin. And it hasn't since. So, should I be getting the message? They were on my desk when I came in this morning. Some kind of joke. Well, that sort of money looks pretty serious to me. Got a problem, you see. I know what you think. I know what you want to do. I know I like you. But I don't know anything really important about you, and I'm not moving this on until I do. Like, have I got a wife somewhere no one knows about? Well, just someone. That'll do for starters. See, I could just shag your brains out, and that would be that. But the trouble is, I've got a feeling that this could actually go somewhere. But I'm not going to do anything until I know where. There is someone, yes. So you're involved? I have been. So it's over? It will be. And does this person know that? I think she suspects. We both know she's not exactly stupid. And neither are you. So is this relationship finishing because the person in question is getting just that little bit too old for you? Yes. You hate me for saying that, yeah? At least you're being honest. It's a start. There have been six deposits in total, all of which have been logged against six meetings. These meetings took place with the same representative of the same company, which is the name that appears in all the checks. Annie, I, I swear I don't know anything about this. This is a setup. Oh no, uh, Tina, wait. Please, where are you going? This is Connor's bed. Oh, there could be a bacchanalian orgy going on and Connor wouldn't notice. Orgy sounds nice. Grand from that little excursion. Belgrade, 50. Still, next communist block. Can't squeeze the unfortunates too much. Dublin, ah, yes, the tiger economy. Nice one quarter of a mil from that one. What did you promise them over there, Tina? Was it the moon, was it? I wasn't even in Dublin. Yeah, your errand boy, then. Or was it a private little scam? Did Richard finally decide he wanted the biggest slice of the cake? Tina. 
Don't tell me you've been shafted by some young buck. Still, hardly a novel experience for you, eh? Come back in. He's in there. Ask him. Do you know? Go after her. Ill health. I think that's probably the best. Yeah. Keep it simple. No comebacks. Don't want another Ron, do we? She was bound to find out sometime. Well, not like this. Tina, hang on. Look, I've been trying to tell you. Tell me what? You can screw whoever you like, Richard. But did you really have to screw me, too? What? Oh, stop the innocent act. I've just seen what you're capable of. Look, I'm not a 25-year-old researcher anymore. Oh, no. You've grown up. I'll give you that. I've grown, Tina. There's a difference. Was this what it was all about? Right from the start? But what are you talking about? We're not out of the slime yet, Connor. How do you mean? Those hackers have been sniffing around the deal she and Mr. Multinational have been putting together. Some of them are stinking higher than a trailer load of bad fish. So, you've got your fall, girl, if the shit really is the fat. There's more than greedy little Tina involved here. Yeah, I think they just found out that Loverboy isn't quite the good and faithful well, servant. They've been stitched, both of them. They've been so blinded by the lucre on offer, they've let all sorts of things go through. Get here tomorrow. I'll show you what we've come up with so far. Bye. Let me explain. She left a message on my machine. She said the usual place would be fine, but could we meet an hour later? She was out with some friends. <laughs> I didn't leave a message. I never arranged for a meeting. Do you understand? I couldn't. It wasn't me. I loved her. I loved her, Ellie. What are you trying to tell me? Yes. and Helen, <laughs> the original piss artist. Career gone, marriage gone. I had only one thing going for me. It was her, Helen. Tina! Tina! Tina, open the door. And in the pubs and clubs of Glasgow, there can be little doubt that this momentous step towards Scottish independence has been given a... I knew something was up when I listened to that message. So I drove straight down to where we were supposed to meet. She was already dead. There was nothing I could do. 
So I called the police and reported having seen a, a body in the water and hung up without giving my name. I found that on the bank. She was killed, Lily. The joyful celebrations of the Scottish independence show no signs of abatement. If anything, Gina. more and more people are joining in. Here in Edinburgh, they are pouring into the Gina. Helen didn't have a single enemy in the world. I did. Was it warning? Were they telling me to back off, to stop digging? I don't believe this. Look at it. They were on the take. And they've been found out. And what are you saying? That Helen got caught in the middle? She's dead, Ellie. What do you think? In politics, you need to know who's your ally. You're our man, Connor. And who is not. There's nothing there to suggest that Richard was taking bribes, is there? I can float your country on a sea of money. I've really got him this time. You talk to the wrong people. In the Company of Strangers continues next Thursday on HTV. In the quest to find Helen's killer, Ellie has been drawn deep into the heart of the Welsh Assembly. And now Tina Martin, the Assembly leader, has been found dead. A tragic accident or a second murder? Find out now in the company of strangers. Me and destiny Tina Martin's vision was of a new politics. Not Whitehall in Cardiff, not Westminster in Wales. Open and inclusive. A modern, vibrant, audacious politics. Celebrating our past, yes. But always looking to the future. Tina, hang on! Look, I've been trying to tell you. Tell me what? You could screw whoever you like, Richard. But did you really have to screw me too? She wanted to see the creation of a progressive country. A country where we stop blaming others for our misfortune. Tina Martin will never be forgotten. And her legacy will live on. A 
as she herself said on, on more than one occasion. We may only be a small country, but we can be a great nation. Just a long weekend. I might well do that. Prague, Paris, somewhere nice. Take your mind off things. 52, 53. Come on, Marie, come on. 56, 57, 58, 59. You've got all day, Dre, you're just not trying. Bastard. We need to talk. It's urgent. Well, I've got this interview at the Beeb and this health benefit at Bridgend. Should be finished by 8.30. Yeah, my office. Fine. Uh -huh. Very nice indeed. Richard's researcher. Bright young thing. Razor sharp. Her father, believe it or not, is the Plaid Cymru candidate fighting Tina's old seat. Mm. Are those people over there from the press, I wonder? I said you should have left through the side door. I have nothing to be ashamed of, Annie. It's a nuisance, though. I want to took them off. Wonderful eulogy. Thank you, Fergus. Great loss to the party. A greater loss to the assembly. Mr. Williamson, the night Tina Martin died, could you please... I've said all I have to say. I've got no other comment to make. Please, we ask that this should be a private memorial service. Tina Martin's death, were you there, sir? I've already given a full account to the police. Mr. Williams, do you deny being there? And will you be standing for the post of First Secretary? I've said all I have to say. Now, please, if you'll excuse me. Is he going to stand? That's a million-dollar question. If he doesn't, it will be plain sailing for you. But life is never that easy, Fergus. You're our man, Connor. Your brother's a sadist. No pain, no gain. I thought swimming was supposed to be fun. Afterwards, when you win. What, is really that important to you? Getting some medal or other? Well, it's not really the medal. It's respect, recognition. Well, what's the good about that? Well, if your name gets really well known, you're bankable. It's just a way out, that's all. Where I come from, with the boys, it's boxing or football. For the girls, babies. Or swimming. Yeah. Or sex. Yeah. You all right? What? Earlier, you and Creepy Chris look nasty. Yeah, well, we've had worse, I can tell you. Every time the boss man says he's flying over, Chris gets PMT. You really are pushing it. So who's coming, then? Tim Hallam. Guy that owns this place and half the world. He's got his own private jet. Must be loaded of them. Absolutely stuffed. Hi, Ellie. Um, I missed you earlier. We need to talk about this leadership thing. I'm not sure if it's right. I'm not quite sure what to do. But we need to talk, so... Well, just give me a ring, yeah? Please. This is about Helen, isn't it? Yes. Tina's secret bank accounts. The Tech 3000 money. What about it? Well, there's nothing there to suggest that Richard was taking bribes, is there? No real evidence. No, nothing. You must have known. It was Tina's lieutenant. Mr. Williams, I've got something here that may interest you. some kind of saint working selflessly for the greater good of the party. So you still think he's got his own offshore bank accounts, then? Must have. We need proof. I know. I know. Thanks, John. You can't just blow up the Welsh Labour Party on a hunch. It couldn't be a worse time. Leadership contest, by-election, general election round the corner. 
I'm not looking for a scandal. I could give you a very different reading to what's happened. Yeah? Well, go on, then. Everybody knows you hated Tina. Ambitious, successful, achieved what you didn't, and suddenly she's not there anymore. So? So? For all I know, all you fed me is fabrication and lies. To discredit Tina and now Richard so you can grab the top job. So what you're saying is, I don't trust you, Connor. Yes. I've told you the truth. Tina took bribes. Fact. Helen's murdered. Fact. I think Richard did it. I also think he killed Tina as well. <laughs> Keep that big mouth of yours shut. Day, every hour. I still think about it. Sometimes I get so choked I can't breathe. I see ghosts. And you think I don't care. I didn't say that. So what happens now? Work together. You get close to Richard and feed me all you can. What? Find out who he meets. When and where. His diary. Anything. And then somehow or other we'll find a way to finish him for what he did to Helen, yeah? Yes. Come on, Ellie, for God's sake. It was hard enough to get Kim to come. We can't leave her on our own in a bar half the night. Hi, Ellie. Um, I missed you earlier. We need to talk about this leadership thing. I'm not sure if it's right. Where did you get this from? Connor White. You have to tell Kim what's going on. It's too soon. We don't know enough. If she found out her sister was murdered and we knew, she'd go crazy. And could you blame her? No. But I don't think she's strong enough to cope. It's not just her. There are serious implications. So what are you going to do? That's Tim Hallam. I'm supposed to be in your neck of the woods tomorrow, but I can't make it. i got to settle some hiccup over here in Seattle. I'm surprised you still haven't declared your intention to stand, Richard. The sooner the better. Team Wales, remember? What is that's you. At the final moment, Richard Williams has declared his intention to stand for the leadership of the Welsh Assembly. So Labour now face the prospect of a head-to-head -head between Westminster experienced Connor White and Richard Williams, one of the new generation of talent brought on by the late Tina Martin. Westminster would certainly have liked to avoid this contest. Now what? Announced, Those creeps. The They're all the same. That the decision will be made by the Welsh. I was told to bring you coffee. Yeah. Yeah, I put it down there. Thanks. What is it with you? The way you watch me all the time. I'm not stupid. I have noticed. Um, <clears throat> I think we should have a proper chat. What about? It's just declared. And what's his line? Tina Martin's anointed one. Responding to irresistible party pressure. <laughs> Thought you'd like that. Be with you now. Please, meet me later. Yeah? Why didn't you tell me? I heard about it in the canteen just now. I didn't think you'd be interested. What? I'm your researcher, for God's sake. Not no more, you know. You talk to the wrong people. Yeah, OK, thanks for your support. Bye. Sorry, but politics just bores me. Hang on. Please, hang on. 
Right. I know it's only secretarial, but it's better than serving biscuits dressed as a penguin. What I do with my life is none of your business. Kim, Kim, don't go, please. Stay. Connor, just to tell you, I've spoken to the Prime Minister again, and he's absolutely adamant that there cannot be any hint of a backroom stitch-up. You're backing off. I'm on message here. He wants to see an openly contested election. Just give it a try. I don't understand how any sane human being can get so worked up about stupid debates. All this fuss at the assembly and what for? What's the point? Kim. Connor, what's going on? Are you still there? Yeah, sorry. What did you say? Are you OK about that? There's nothing I can do. Over the next few days, Connor will stress experience and strong leadership. And he just wanted to float the idea by me of asking you to take some kind of job in his cabinet. What? Well, dream ticket kind of thing? Making it out as a plea for party unity because of the forthcoming by-elections, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I heard your father's already out on the war path. His big dream come true. So he hopes. But so far as Connor's tactics are concerned, all I'm saying is to be ready. Okay? I don't like secret meetings. I don't like secrets at all. Like you and Tim Hallam in Dublin? I work for you, Richard. Do you? Yes. So tell me, do you think I had something to do with Tina's death that night? Did you? What do you think? You tell me. No, no, it's important for me to know what you think. Tina fell. It was an accident. That's right. Connor is not going to win. You are. But we've got to learn to trust each other again. Won't you pursue the same policies? Connor, I'm not Tina Martin. I'm my own man following my own agenda. Which is what? Setting up an autonomous Labour Party in Wales? No, of course not. I mean, what we aim to do is this. We now, would that be the royal way? It's terrible. I'm afraid you're on your You're all over the place at that point. No, Connor, it's not what Every I was Every time you mention Tina, you feel... I know. Well, if you take time to listen... I am listening. And I'm sliding in well, the pause. Thank you, gentlemen. We've only got three days left. Do you know what I think? I think you should tell the truth. Why are you looking at me like that? It's nothing. It's just you remind me so much of Tina. I wish I was as focused. It's so clear. She always talked of Team Wales playing on the European field. And she knew what she believed in. So do you. Early. I know. Go back to bed. Something I should know about? No, no, it's something else. Something I've got to sort out of my own head. Which is what? I'll tell you again. Go on. How are things going? Yeah, good. You change your mind about that job? Join the winning team. Told you. Politics not really my thing. What is your thing? I'm a filmmaker. So you're just doing this to get some money together for film school? 
Actually, I'm more sort of getting myself together. Something bad happened four months back. The regeneration of areas like this is of great importance. You've done wonders here. You must be very proud. No Thank you. With Westminster. No implementing London Labour power soak to the Welsh as the will of the Assembly. Oh, oh love. Join yourself. Inclusive politics. Just another way of saying let Westminster have their fingers in our affairs. <laughs> What's driving the Labour Party in Wales today? Mm. Paranoia and fear. Because you know. Your time is up! Christ, your father doesn't give an inch, does he? Are you sure you want to be here? I wouldn't miss it for the world. Apparently somebody in the office told IT and I wasn't going to give any more interviews except to the BBC. Mine's like steel bloody traps in there. Right, where are we off? Supposed to be transporting general in Swansea. But I got the time wrong. It's too late now. What's up? Thank you. I hope all this baby kissing's worth it. Come on, out you go. Come on, come and join our line. Remember your roots. I'm not likely to forget. A few more seats and Ply will be controlling the assembly. Pigs will fly. <laughs> Ply, first secretary facing Connor White as leader of the opposition. Lunch, Griff. I thought you had him on a strict diet. In a mo. You thought you might stand against Griff yourself here. Not like you to miss an opportunity. I didn't put my name down. Scared? Too young. I'd never have been selected. Besides, there's something I've got to do first. It is a matter of loyalty, Lauren. But then again, you wouldn't know much about that, would you? Did your dad tell you about the farm? Maybe you should talk to him. We're doing fine. You're not letting me down. We're nearly there. I just don't think I can deliver you that victory. I think it'd be better if someone else took my place. Why the hell are you doing this to me now? I'm sorry. Two days ago? Huh? Two days. Press will have a field day. Vincent resigned. Ratley's sinking ship. I said I'm sorry. John, boy, don't rat on me. I can't. John, please, I need you. I'm sorry. I just resigned. John? John! You can't! But this was my home. You don't have to justify yourself to her, Griff. It's none of your business. Get lost. Ellie, please. Your mother forced this sale through. Griff's had to pay her an arm and a leg. And so we should for all he's done to her. Then don't blame me. You can't have it both ways. What a hell, Lauren. Ellie, calm down. Look. I had no option but to sell. The farm was a drain. I needed the money to keep the haulage businesses going. I was given a very good offer by this conservation group, Green Plan Cymru. Dad, I don't care if you'd have sold it to the Pope. You should have told me. Come on. Cup of tea. Conniving, two-faced little shit. Well, that makes two of us. Smile. Do you think it's the bag, Connor? The election of the Labour leader is imminent. My calumnia is a solid at Congratulations. Thank you, Fergus. Connor, Connor, what can I say? You behaved impeccably. <laughs> well, go on then, First Secretary. They're all waiting for you. Good man. Brilliant, 
And what about Helen? You said you were on for a coffee. I was. Last minute booking, sorry. No worries. No, listen. Listen. I've really got him this time. You hear me? I hear you, yes. I will, yes. No. No, don't do that. Skim. Is a totally unworkable, totally stupid idea. What then? I see a smug grinning face all over the place. I think of Ellen, and nothing's happening. Well, how do you think I feel sleeping next to him, huh? Get a grip, Connor. Things are happening. Like what? I've arranged a meeting with Tech 3000. Richard will deliver an address to Tim Hallam's executives on the 17th. So? Well, we've got nothing on him. Tech 3000 is all we've got. Don't mess things up for me. I see from the diary the tax three thousand is done. Postpone it. You're the guest of honor. They'd be expecting a speech. It would be a brilliant chance for you to state your policy on inward investment. I need more time to think things through. Why? What's the problem? It's a bit early, that's all. Well, I think you should go. Keep them on site. Ellie. I think you should apologize to your father. You're giving him a lot of pain. What about the pain you've given me? You won't give an inch, will you? Why should I? Well, here, have some more pain from me personally. Early June. It all started because Chris wouldn't give me my fair share. Oh, he's such a control freak. I played along for a while, and then I got angry. So I go behind his back, finds my own punters. Trouble is, he finds out, doesn't he? So he teaches me a lesson. Won't stop me, though. Is it worth the risk? It's good money. Interested? No way. Not even with a big boss, man. Really? No hassle. Pays like you wouldn't believe. Valerie Ann Parry, Labour. 12,343. Rivith Powell James, Plaid Cymru, 14,719. This is an historic moment. Tonight, a myth has died. There is no such thing as a safe Labour seat in Wales.
I just don't get it, dear. It's all to do with power. Politicians of a third nostril to smell it out. Come on. People still love and respect you. That was obvious during the leadership campaign. It's nothing to do with people. It's nothing to do with love. Look. When you offered me that job, I was close to giving up. You gave me back just a little bit of confidence and... Where are you going? Don't you want your coffee? Coffee? I'm gonna get some bloody sake. Land and people, Ellie. The two core commodities. That's why we're considering seriously investing in your country. And you've already bought a lot of the first? Yes, and we're having a look at some companies, and if the price is right, we'll buy them. And if the price isn't right? Oh, we'll just have to make sure it is. Smart girl. Lucky guy. If we don't stop him now, he'll do exactly what Tina did. Might even do a secret deal with Clyde. And, uh, and I will be heading down the Scottish Road in Norton. So what are you saying? Wasn't well, it plain bloody obvious what I'm saying? You gave me copies of Tina's bent bank accounts. You must have something on Richard. Yeah? No. What, nothing? Absolutely nothing. Tina Martin was a woman of absolute integrity. She was a woman of unique vision. She envisaged a world where business and politics would stand side by side. As I say, a unique vision. But there is no reason that that vision has to die with Tina. And ladies and gentlemen, that is why tonight it gives me very great pleasure to invite her successor, the first secretary of the National Assembly for Wales, and our very good friend, Mr. Richard Williams. You release those bank documents on Tina Martin to the press. You do that, Connor. And you're in very serious trouble. You owe me a big favor. Help me out. Who tore into the quangos? Who did your dirty work? And who tracked Tina Martin for you? Hmm? During the leadership contest, we talked to Richard. An understanding was reached. The PM likes him, thinks he's a safe pair of hands. What Westminster didn't want and doesn't want is a boozed out, undisciplined, indiscreet, bitter, twisted, loutish, off the message prick like you. And frankly, even if Richard were to fall under a bus. <laughs> you bastard! <laughs> I'm sad to say, but that was Tina Martin's great mistake. During my first few weeks in office, I've had to rethink hard and come to different conclusions. The reality is this. The primary legislative center is still Westminster. The party of which I am a member is a British party. Wales is still an integral part of the United Kingdom. What happened? They didn't seem to want me to drive. Thanks for coming. Why me? The Scottish experiment is for the Scots alone. The Welsh people have chosen a different path. And, under my leadership, 
the Welsh Assembly will operate fairly but firmly within the status quo. taken a single bribe from anybody. I've seen statements, documents, money paid to Tina from Tech 3000. No, you're wrong. Have you ever taken a bribe from Tech 3000? No. I don't believe you. And I think you went to Tina's flat that night. You did, didn't you? Tell me the truth. Yes, I did. I thought it was some self-destructive Welsh thing. It's in our genes, isn't it? Deep down in our psyche, this fear. Instead of being a strong leader like everybody thought she was, Maybe Tina was just, well, basically just a very insecure person like the rest of us. I thought finding us together was enough to tip her over the edge. Or did you really think I was screwing up politically? She was already dead. There was nothing I could do. Ellie, you must believe me. So what's the truth about Tech 3000? I told you in Dublin it was a tool to break the Westminster chains. Tina wanted to court them, turn a multinational to Wales' advantage. So what about your big U-turn tonight? What happened to your vision, your ideals? We have to be pragmatic. I can't believe you've changed so much. So who told you about these secret bank accounts Tina had? He did. Connor White. There were no bribes. He set her up. I would still have given you breakfast. Thanks. We'll get something on the plane. Have to get back. What did happen to Team Wales? I'm not cutting you out, Tim. All I'm saying is the Tech 3000 must follow the same procedures like everyone else. You've been got at. Give him time. He's been under a lot of strain recently. You know that he and Team... Uh, yes, yes, yes. Look, use your influence. 
Give me five years and I can float your country on a sea of money. All you'll have to do is lie back and sip it up through a straw. Now, as far as I'm concerned, Wales is credit worthy. But there are other countries. I'm really getting close at last. The club is a part of a chain owned by a Tech 3000 subsidiary. You're sure? Yes. Karen knows what she's talking about. She's been at the club a while. She definitely said it was a man called Tim Hallam. Great. Now get straight on to Aidan and get him to dig into an organisation called Green Plan Cymru. Guess who's a director? Connor White. Find him? I'll try his flat again. Oh, I just did. No reply. Connor's gone to ground. OK, well, if we can't find Connor, we'll have to talk to Tim Hallam. I already have. The bastard's on his way over right now. Get out. I can uh, clean up at home if I like. It's okay. I thought Karen was down for the 230 aromatherapy. Cancelled. No demand for that service. Well, where is she then? Don't know, don't care. Hi. You've got something? Dynamite. Eddie's in for a major shock when she sees some of this stuff. is a pay director of Green Plan Cymru and so is John Vincent, who just so happens to be the chair of the Assembly Environment Committee. Fascinating. I told you the land has been bought for a non-profit making nature reserve. Wrong. What then? These farms will be part of a genetic engineering scheme used for trials. What? Quite extremely controversial. Cloned tomatoes and calves with two heads. Trials so on edge that you can't do them anywhere else in Europe. You need special dispensation from the powers that be, which is where Green Plan Cymru fits in, a PR company hiding the real owners. Yes, who are they? Well, they're a company with at least two dozen subsidiaries from all over the globe. Congratulations, Dad. You have been screwed by a multinational called Tech 3000. I miss her so much, it hurts. I'm worried I'm always going to have these dark nights. Waking up in the early hours. Seeing Helen there. He tapes us. Me having sex or whatever with the politicians with a security camera at the club. But who's paying Chris? Is it Tim Hallam? Let's 
getting chilly. Do you want to come back to the flat? I'll stick this needle into your arm and I won't stop until it's in your marrow. Now, tell me what you said. say anything. Did anyone else know? Ellie? This is insane. This skirt is really short. I rather think that's the point, isn't it? <laughs> For Christ's sake, will you stop this? Look, if you want to help, shut up and go to the club with Ellie. Well, you go meet a man who probably killed Helen. So ask him if he's already bought and paid for Wales. Ellie, tell her to stop this. It's crazy. <laughs> I don't want you here when I get back. the end of your brilliant career. And yours.
Good evening. I'm a friend of Karen's. Karen Patterson. She said maybe you'd like some company. Hello, Mr. Hallam. Hello, Mr. Hallam. Hello, Mr. Hallam. Whatever trouble I was in, you'd be there for me. That's what you said. That's what you promised. Why didn't you tell me about Connor and Helen? So she didn't just die. It wasn't just an accident that like you said. Oh, it's just baby Kim all over again, wasn't it? There's not just Helen involved here. There is for me. There were other things we had to take into consideration. What other things? And it was we. I don't know what's going on here, Kim. That's what I'm trying to find out. Who killed her? Miss Deborah. Yes. Mr. Hallam? Come in. TV, the tense conclusion of In the Company of Strangers. In their hunt for Helen's murderer, the girls have gone deep into the heart of the Welsh Assembly. Dressed as a hooker, Murray goes to question their prime suspect, Tim Hallam. Just give me an hour. Oh! <laughs> Rickard, you're a shifty conniving, two faced little shit. Well, that makes two of us. You can screw whoever you like, Richard. But did you really have to screw me, too? Tina has to be persuaded to go. Quietly. <laughs> Tina took bribes. Fact! Helen's murdered. Fact! I think Richard did it. Congratulations, Dad. You have been screwed by a multinational called Tech 3000. I don't know what's going on here, Kim. That's what I'm trying to find out. Who killed her? Hello, Mr. Hallam.
supposed to call on the hour every hour. Nothing. Where is my sister? Tim leaving about eight o'clock. Where was he going? He doesn't know. And he's certain it was Tim. Seems he's a car freak. Had a good look at Tim's milk. On the right? There was a young girl in the passenger seat. Did she look frightened? Was she trying to get out? It's a three-litre injection job. Tim's milk, special edition. Richard. Well, he wasn't really looking at her, was he? No Connor and no Tim Howam. One lead left. over an hour ago. The hospital felt they should inform the police straight away, yeah? Just wait till the press get hold of this. Not so high-class call girl involved with a string of assembly members. So what is this? Good or bad? Not good for the call girl. I'm all right. It just means that every policeman in town is out looking for Chris, which is a good thing. This Chris, this girl's boss. Karen. Can you lead us to my aid? Maybe. Ellie! He works for Tim. He was involved with a tape scam, so maybe. In other words, we're desperate. Have you got a better idea? Yeah. Why the hell didn't you keep my sister out of this in the first place? It's Tim Hallam's neck on the block just as much as ours. Why would it come out? He's got the tapes. And whatever other little time bombs have been putting in place to make us look like power mad incompetence. So all he does then is hold the gun to your head. Whenever he needs a tax benefit here, a little bit of startup capital there, ammunition. You know about Parade? Have you heard anything? You know about Helen, that she was murdered. No offence, Kim, but it's the living I'm more concerned with right now. Ellie said you found some tapes. Yeah, we got one. Remember all you said in Dublin? Tim Hallam, Tech 3000, multinationals. Swimming with sharks, but at least we'd be swimming. OK, Ellie! We've been eaten alive here, aren't we? God, where's Maraid? I don't see the point of all this. Maybe it's what Helen got mixed up in. God, not back to Helen again. I want to know what happened to my sister. I want to know what's happening to mine. If we find out what happened to Helen, then maybe we get to Maraid. Are there any more? Not in the club. So this bloke, the one who made this tape, where does he live? It's 
So what's this little favor going to cost, then? An extra hundred bobbies on the beat? Well, you won't be expecting any budget cuts come his next annual review, that's for sure. I didn't mean any harm. Whatever happened, it was an accident. I, I was... I was just... Uh... What do you work for, Chris? Who tells you what to do? Where do you go to meet up? I don't meet anyone. I just get messages. How? Computers, faxes. It's just a sideline, that's all. I deliver, I get paid. Accidents do happen, Chris. The finger of suspicion was pointed my way recently. I know how difficult that can be. Right. People meet all sorts of unfortunate ends in all sorts of different circumstances. And sometimes those circumstances seem to involve people they don't. Yeah. Yeah, right again. Tim Hallam. Who? He's the man who pays your wages. He owns your club, Chris. We're part of a chain. I hardly ever see my area manager, let alone anyone else. So you had no dealings with him? Aren't you listening? I never saw anyone, I never met anyone, I just got messages. I did what I was told. <laughs> so how does it feel to be dead? With creeps like Chris around, better than being alive. Is any of this helping? He's all we've got. Now he's frightened. It's got to help. Somewhere in the bedroom. Clever Kim. First rule of filmmaking. Always make copies. Yeah, it's also the first rule of blackmail. Come on. What? I don't know. Close, are we? Connor gone. Tim Hallam gone. Of course they'd leave Chris behind for us. Nothing leads us back to them. The most unconvincing hooker he'd ever met. Is that a compliment, you reckon? So what happened? Oh, he'd sauced me, Kim. I understand you'd like some company. Meet Murray Devereaux, the walking cliché. I took him to the club and I showed him everything. The treatment room and that weird room next door. But then he started doing some digging himself. Not just the club business stuff too. Documents, deals, all the way over my head. The tapes are the least of your problems. If they're made public, most you'll have is a minor sex scandal. So why is all this happening? Well, look at the people on those tapes. Planners, local councilmen. Committee small fry. And look at the deals we've concluded, your assembly and my company. Every land purchase, 
a small extra clause added. Every factory acquisition, a slight twist in permissions. Nothing that I've ever agreed to. Or nothing that you've ever demanded be put in place. Whole thing's designed to be made public at the right moment to discredit your assembly and my company. So someone's been poisoning the whole partnership. Controlling us before we've even started. Oh, Tim. Well, that's very much your problem. What does that mean? It means I don't know who's been screwing you, and I don't care who's been screwing you. I am out. I could deal with Tina, at least I thought I could. And you people aren't serious about the creation of real wealth. I'm going to put my money somewhere where it's more politically stable, like Kosovo. She might have been pregnant. Did you know? God. There's someone we've got to meet. If Helen was pregnant... If! ...then it was all hushed up. I mean, nothing was mentioned in the inquest. So who made sure of that? Was it the same people who brought her to the spot that night? Was it the same people who killed her? He was on one of the tapes last night. The coroner who handled the inquest, Kim saw him. So was he lent on, and who by? I was only in the city for the one night. I got back from dinner to find a card pushed under the door. I could have just gone to bed. The tape arrived the following week, the letter two days later. It was only the one detail I had to omit. So Helen was definitely pregnant? Oh, yes. But it had no bearing on the young lady's death. It really didn't. So there didn't seem much harm. All this has really got to come out, has it? don't know any more than I told you last night. So who put the note under the bedroom door? Things like that happened all the time. Yeah, but who targeted that one man on that one night? Same story everywhere. Everyone does little bits. Nobody seems to know who's behind it or why. I did see someone once. Some old rock star had come into the club. Chris thought we might be able to screw an extra few quid out of it. Told me to wait for someone to collect the drop. I only got a glimpse. I wouldn't have thought anything about it. I was watching telly a few nights later. A news programme about your place. So who was he? 
not a he. You're looking a bit brown around the edges. Transferred down in 81. Look after your aging mother. All quite a come down. According to the line manager we talked to. High flyer at the DTI all the way back to the provinces. Talk to me, Annie. The flat was packed with their stuff. Literature, calling cards, old speeches. They seem to have set themselves up a few years before her transfer in 79. Their finest hour. No to devolution and hello Maggie, all at the same time. So, Annie was their nose on the ground. Not me, after all. The permanent presence. I don't buy it. All this planning, all this mayhem. And it's down to a sad bunch of leftover little Englanders. Well, why not? A few months before a general election, and you blow the great reform clean out of the water. Not a bad shot to have in your locker. May 97, I was on Waterloo Station. The day after our Labour landslide, I picked up the Evening Standard, saw pictures of them all. Aitken, Hamilton, all the slime balls, all the Tory sleaze merchants, and I wondered, what will they do now? Where will they go? What if they didn't go anywhere? What if they just stuck around? Hmm? What's Annie actually saying? Annie? She hasn't opened her mouth. So we still know nothing. Nothing about Helen. We still don't know why she was killed. No. You may be in from the cold so far as Richard is concerned. You're as big a shit as any of them for doing that to Kim. So, now you've discovered my political affiliations. Well, even civil servants are allowed the vote. So now you know I don't like your dreams of leaving, your desire to redig the dike. Well, that's no crime either. But stand all this on its head for a moment and see whether you like it quite as much then, because this isn't going to stop with you, you know. And it won't stop with the Scots. What the hell are they doing in there? We get no straight answers. Who killed my sister? the most acquisitive, rapacious nation in history, and you are disenfranchising them. You're taking away from them all the time. So what happens when they rediscover their nationalist fervor? Hmm? You take that genie out of the bottle, and there's no knowing where that's going to end. waiting for Kim. Maria, this is not how it works. Oh, Who's please. John Vincent? Yeah, he was one of ours.
twice, three times a week he'd come in. One of Karen's special clients, if I remember. Glad you do. I never remember faces. Bitch. You bitch! I'll kill you! I'll kill you! We want some answers. We've seen the tape. <laughs> when they first told me about those tapes, I nearly pissed myself laughing. Who are they going to show them to? My wife? She spends every waking moment staring into a bottle of gin. So what do they hold over you? The press? Oh, please. Just what I need to kickstart this ailing career. Nice, juicy sex scandal. But that woman back at the assembly, Annie, she didn't know exactly what happened. Not the details. But what she did know was that you were involved. Yes. So how? And you keep going on about they. I mean, who the hell is they? I'm a bag man, Ellie. I just run errands. For? For the finer things in life. I mean, who for? Two grand a week coke cabbage, for starters. I didn't even know your sister. She was just the name on an email to me. You got Helen down to the dock that night? Yeah. They really had me after that, didn't they? There was the connection they could use any time they wanted. I sent the message. A young girl ended up dead. You're doing it again. They. Who? Was it that woman after all? Annie. Annie of the Iron Knickers Admiration Society. <laughs> they must have laughed when they realised they could get that sad bunch of right-wing throwbacks to do their work for them. Do you think there's names? Faces? I told you we're bit part players. We never met anyone with any real clout. I got instructions the same as Annie. We were both being used. But the difference between me and her is that I know that. I'm doing it for profit, she's doing it for the principal. But in the end, we're both being shafted, and I don't know who by. And to be perfectly honest, I really don't care. Now, you can try those for my balls if you like, but I swear to you, I don't know who killed your sister, and I don't know why. So what's the game? Oh, come on, Ellie. You might feel the need to pretend in front of your friends, but you can drop the innocent act now. What are you talking about? What was that? A warning shot across the bows? Well, I don't need it. And you make sure you tell him that too. And tell him he can be a bit more generous the next time we set up a nice little land deal. You didn't know, did you? Oh, come on, Ellie. Green Plan Cymru, the land deals. You haven't even learned the basics yet. It's not your opponents you need to fear in this game. It's those who should be on your side. They're your enemies. <laughs> Your father's not been well. Too much fish. He's been under a lot of strain. So have the rest of us. It all started the day you came into our lives. Any connection there, do you think? I stood by him, Ellie. I should think so, too. After all the damage you've done. You still really think it was me, do you? You really think I was that strong? I worked for your father for six years, Ellie. Six years. In all that time, he never so much as looked at me. But I was there for him when everything else turned sour, when everyone else turned against him. And I'll still be there when you do too. John Vincent called. You better come in. 
John Vincent thinks it's money. I don't. I reckon you just couldn't stand it. The assembly, well, it should have been your moment of glory, shouldn't it? Plied Cymru, the homegrown party, but someone else was taking it away from you. I mean, was it really better to destroy the whole process? To set Wales back 30-odd years just because you wanted to see the Labour Party mess it up again? It's not a rerun of 79. Forget Kinnock. Forget George Thomas. We've moved on. Tell her, Griff. What? What have you got to lose? I was there that night, Ellie. The start of it all, 66, I'm my first MP. No, I don't like accommodation. No, I don't like having to adjust to the tides of change. It's like saying, let's compromise. Let's be another branch of Little England. What are you trying to tell me? There was an enemy within, Ellie. There is an enemy within. But I'm not that enemy. Although the John Vincents of this world think I am. I was canvassed to join. She seduced him, Ellie. Who did? They knew what we felt. About the uh, devolution process. The doubts that I had if it would ever proceed. They used anyone, friend or foe, just to keep a check on the assembly. They attempted to recruit me. Hm. Your mother found out. And that was it for the two of us. Lost my way after that. I'm not getting this. Who, who canvassed you? And Mum. Mum had no interest in politics. She never has had. I suppose giving her the photos of our little playtime together was their revenge for me not joining them the way they wanted. You're not making any sense. It was that Christmas, Ellie. You brought her home to stay for a few nights. Do you remember? How could I tell you that, Ellie? Out of all things. I've met some neat operators in my time. Helen was one of the best. She came up to me after that first lecture. Asked all the right questions. Seemed to have all the right beliefs. She seemed passionate. Go on. <clears throat> Didn't start that night. A few days later, after a couple more meetings. I really thought I... Uh, so, was it possible she didn't fall for my youthful good looks? Oh, I think so. Don't you?
what's the point of all this? I needed to do it. I just landed a job at that lobbying company. I'd come up for a conference. The whole world seemed to be waking up for me. I was finally starting to move in the sort of circles where I could make things count. So, did she take up with me because of what I started to do? Was I more of a walking address book than a boyfriend? We all know bits about her, like us. Put all those bits together, then maybe finally we get the whole thing. Maybe then we find out why she died. She was my friend. I don't need other people telling me what she was. I thought she was mine too. Was she using me to get a griff? You to get her aid? She was still my friend. You've not been returning my calls. Ever since I got back from Dad's, this deafening silence. It's end of story, Ellie. Not quite. Look, we've got the tapes. They're being disposed of. We're putting right everything that was wrong about those land deals, and Annie's been pensioned off. Now, I'd call that end of story, wouldn't you? I want to show you something. I've got some tapes I'd like you to see. In my office. What? He sacked me. Why? Who told him? You what? So, was it possible she didn't fall for my youthful good looks? Oh, I think so. Don't you? So Connor got taken for a ride, so what? Think it through, Richard. Tina was out of control. Tina needed to be watched, so Connor was recruited. Which must all have been quite flattering with that pissed up old boozer to feel that trusted. That close to the seat of power. It's only one small problem, really. Who in their right mind would trust Connor? Leave this, Ellie. So, the watcher needed to be watched, didn't he? Guard needed guarding. Which means whoever put Connor onto Tina put Helen onto Connor. You are not stupid. You can work this out just as easily as I can. Talk to me, Richard. If it had turned out to be Annie, fair enough. You can shout that from the rooftops. If it was that sad father of yours, okay, we'd stick a size 10 boot in. But we do not, not go any further down this road, okay, Ellie? I was just told. That's all I know. Told what? Surplus to requirements. That was the line. Who was lying? Who told you to get rid of me? All I know is I got a call. Who from? My boss. I want to talk to him. We're centrally administered. What does that mean? It means we're part of a group, so my hands are tied, aren't they? Well, uh, do you want to meet him? Whatever they say in London, we do. missed, but I found out where he is. A rather overpriced piece of information. Come on. I didn't know that was Fergus's thing. Be useful. Give it five minutes. Let it get interesting. 
Why are you doing this, Connor? Because I need to know. Why she died? Among other things. She was never your lover. Not really. You do realize that, don't you? But who was she, though? That's what I really want to know. And when I do, perhaps I can get it out of my head. Dad wants to know if you're coming in for tea. Yeah. It seemed a brilliant idea at the time. Sweep through a quick bit of constitutional reform. Go down in history as real radicals. Destroy the opposition, the Conservative and Unionist Party. Not much good without a union. There were those of us even then who suspected that this may not actually make things better. We thought that devolution could be the biggest own goal in history. But Tony Boy was the risen Christ, wasn't he? If he'd told us to walk on water that day, we'd have all gone out and bought flippers. They honestly believed that two grateful nations would love us forever. Well. The jocks lost no time in disabusing us of that fond notion. And then came Tina. Take the last election at the frame, and it's a freak result. And now look at good old middle England. It's never elected Labour, ever. Now, if you take Scotland out of the equation, take away Wales, that's about all we've got left. From glory to oblivion in four short years. Come on, Connie, you know the score. We had to do something. What about Helen? She was recruited in her second year. The golden girl. Glittering future. Every party has them. Only this one made a mistake. She did the one thing none of us expected. Least of all me. I don't know if this is going to make you feel better or worse, Connor. She was sent to you as work. It ended up much more than that. So then she wanted out, which is when I passed it on. Time for the security boys to get involved. This was way, way beyond my control. And that is honestly all I know. I read the reports on her death, of course, but as to the exact whys and wherefores. She was just killed. Well, as I understand it, matters were uh, a bit more messy than that. An overly zealous attempt at persuasion that went badly wrong. In the end, it was like most things in this world. All a bit of a cock up. I've spoken to Connor. And? Tina saw this four years ago, Ellie. If you try and force the pace of change, they'll destroy you. She thought she could play things differently. So how do we play this now? These are our own people, Ellie. Which makes it worse. Which makes it impossible. Shafted by your own and you can't prove a damn thing. Now, if you take Scotland out of the equation, take away Wales, that's about all we've got left. From glory to oblivion in four short years. Come on, Connor, you know the score. We had to do something. Ellie. Ellie! This is not how it's done. It is not how the game is played. And now we retrench. We regroup. We do not shit on our own from a great height, because if we do that, we shit on ourselves too. And you really are convinced they're our own? Ellie, they're all we've got. And they're a damn sight closer than we Willie's little lot or that sad bunch of roadside daubers back home. 
Ellie, listen to me. Listen to me, Ellie. 25% of the population voted us in. That's hardly a popular mandate. You go public on this, you give the other 75% the perfect excuse to pull the whole place down. Give it time. Give the two of us a bit of time as well. Who knows what we might do in a few years? You have to tell Kim what's going on. It's too soon. There are serious implications. Give it time. Give the two of us a bit of time as well. I understand it. The matters were a bit more messy than that. In the end, it was like most things in this world. All a bit of a cock up. She had to know Marade. She deserved that at least. For what it's worth, I think you're right. So does Moraid. Kim couldn't stay little sis forever. So what am I doing here? Ah, oh, no. So who was it, Connor? When we were alone, in bed together. Whose face did you see? Me? Or Helen? Helen. So you can do this. You can get all this on the right desks in front of the right people. They'd lap it up. They were suspicious enough four years ago. But Ron, did he fall? Was he pushed? This is dynamite, which means trouble. Oh, it create a stir, all right. But you can't control it. You've no idea where this will end. We've been controlled up to now. Look where that's got us. Richard was right. It's got all backfire. And maybe it'll wake us up at last. Make us decide that we don't need any more control. That we can grow up all by ourselves. Your tapes, Ellie. Your choice. Not your opponents you need to fear in this game. It's those who should be on your side. The sun is shining. They used anyone, friend or foe, just to keep a check on the assembly. But we're dead from the waist down. Oh, it creates a stir, all right. You can't control it. You've no idea where this will end. In May 2002, a general election returned a Labour government, albeit with a vastly reduced majority. 
Connor White retains his seat in the Welsh Assembly and now holds the environment brief. Richard Williams remains first secretary. Mairead Devereux returned to her native Ireland where she's training with the national swimming team, sponsored by Tech 3000. Kim Morrison is now living in France. Her first film opens on the Parisian art house circuit in the spring. Ellen James was killed in a car crash on her way from Cardiff to London, where she was due to take part in a television programme. The programme was subsequently cancelled. Good night.